Why was it okay for him to shoot after the guy was down? None of you guys can use the he shouldn't have been there argument because the reality is, is that nobody. I feel like Destiny isn't acknowledging how they're both wrong unless he already did and I missed it. I, judging like wrongness here is difficult. Personally, I think it's dumb to go and defend anything with your life when it's like a business. Unless it's literally like a family owned business or some shit. I wouldn't f do it. I think it's stupid to do it, especially when you're this young. Why would you Why would you ever risk your life and the rest of your ship for doing it? But like, does he have as much right to be there as like any protester or rider? He would have taken my gun. He would have used it against me. Let's break that down. First of all, you had already prevented him from taking your gun by running away and doing that little dip and dodge that Mr. McGinnis talked about, right? He was still coming after my gun. But you could have kept running. You could no, have turned I... back around like you did, couldn't you? No, I couldn't have. You have the gun strapped to your body at this moment, correct? Yes. The strap is designed to keep that on your body so it doesn't come off, correct? Not to, to help retain it, yes. Yeah, but you have both hands on the gun, correct? Yes. And Mr. Ritt or Mr. Rosenbaum has never said anything at all about. You never heard him say anything about that. Wait, what's correct? going on? Are they pinched to zooming right now? You never said anything. He never said anything to you about using that gun at all. Correct? I don't know what Mr. Rosenbaum was thinking when he tried to grab my gun. You just assumed that he was going to use it, that he was going to try and take it from you, first of all, and then you assumed he was going to try and use it on you. I mean, I think that's I a pretty... I Mr. Rosenbaum get my gun. He would have killed me. But you had already pointed your gun at him. Yes, because he was chasing me. Did you want him to think that you were going to shoot him? No, I never wanted to shoot Mr. Rosenbaum. Why did you point it at him if you didn't have any intention of shooting? He was chasing me. I was alone. He threatened to kill me earlier in that night. I didn't want to have to shoot him. But you understand how dangerous it is to point a gun at someone, don't you? <laughs> I pointed at him because he kept running at me and I but didn't How circular are we going to me? But you understand how dangerous that is, don't you? I pointed at him because he was chasing me. I'll ask the question a third time, Mr. Rittenhouse. You understand uh, Don't how... comment. Um, uh, just ask your question. You understand how dangerous it is to point a gun at someone, correct? Yes. You understand that that puts someone else in fear that they're about to be killed, right? He was chasing me. You understand that when you point your AR-15 at someone else, that may make them feel like they are about to be killed by you. Correct? Mr. Rosenbaum was chasing me. He said he was going to kill me if he got me alone. I was alone. Isn't, isn't he supposed to answer I the question? Shouldn't the judge him, make him answer the question? Him, and it didn't stop him from continuing to chase me. Did you hear my question? Yes. Yet you chose not to answer. Objection, Your Honor. He answered. He just didn't like the answer. My question is, you understand that when you point your AR-15 at someone, it may make them feel like you're going to kill them, correct? False for speculation. He asked if it, it would affect someone that way uh, so as to perhaps deter the person. Do you understand my question? I do. Can you please answer? I did. I said, I, Mr. Have, Rosenbaum have, was chasing me. That's not the answer to the question. I pointed my gun at him and that did not deter him. He could have ran away instead of trying to take my gun from me. But he kept chasing me. It didn't stop him. Mr. Rittenhouse, you're telling us that you felt like you were about to die, right? Yes. Like you were about to you, die, right? Yes. But when you point the gun at someone else, that's going to make them feel like they're about to die, right? That's what you wanted him to feel. No. You wanted him to get the message from you that if you come any closer, I'm going to kill you. That's why you pointed the gun at him, right? I pointed the gun at him to deter him from... I, I pointed the gun at him so he would stop chasing me. That's why you, I pointed the gun at him. Because if you point the gun at him, you were hoping 
He would stop chasing you because he would get the message from you that if he keeps coming, you're going to kill him. Right? I didn't want to have to kill Mr. Rosenbaum. Is answering yes even a bad thing here? Uh, so I don't know how he's been coached or whatever for the answering, but if he's trying to establish self-defense, he has to show that like he didn't, he, he's not there to kill somebody. Uh, but it was like a last thing because he thought that his life was in danger, right? So that's like what the, I don't know how much they're allowed to coach or whatever, but that's what he's trying to get across. I thought he was going to kill me. I thought he was going to kill me, right? That's not the question I asked. You, the entire... It seems argumentative, Mr. Uh, he said it serves no useful purpose. It's dangerous. Um, it does seem hard to You intended, in that sequence we just saw, you intended to point your gun back at Mr. Rosenbaum in the middle of the parking lot, right? I pointed at him so he would stop chasing me, but he didn't stop. That I was your interested. intentional decision to point at him. That wasn't an accident. No, I'm gonna interrupt here. The jury cannot see you. I thought we moved it. I'm sorry. No, so this please get it out of there. The point I'm trying to get at Mr. Rittenhouse is that that wasn't like an accidental turning around and it just happens to be pointing in his direction, much like I'm just happened to, you know, wave this around. You made an intentional decision in the middle of that incident to turn and point the gun at Mr. Rosenbaum, correct? Yes. And you can understand why that would make someone fearful for their life, right? But he continued to chase me after, so no, I can't. It didn't work. It, it didn't stop Mr. Rosenbaum from chasing me. And even after you shoot him one time and he starts falling, you continue to shoot three more times, right? Yes, just say yes. I continued to shoot until he was no longer a threat to me. And then after that, you run around and he's lying there, face down on the ground, correct? Yes. And you're a medic, correct? I, I have first aid training, yes. You proclaimed yourself that night to be a medic, an EMT. You told everyone that, right? Yes. And you had your medic bag with you, correct? Yes. And this location is right across the street from a hospital, isn't it? Yes. But your first thought was, run away. My first thought was to help him. You didn't do anything to help him. You didn't do a single thing, did you? The crowd started to scream, get him, get him, get him. And I didn't want to stay there with the crowd building and the mob advancing on me. Were you surprised that a crowd would react that way when they just saw you shoot someone? I don't know. When you stood over Mr. Rosenbaum's body, did you know? I, I, I'm, I'm... Go ahead. When you stood over Mr. Rosenbaum's body, did you know whether he was dead or alive? I didn't. Did you know whether or not it was possible at that moment to try and save him? I wanted to help Mr. Rosenbaum. And if the crowd wouldn't have started screaming to get him, get him, get him, I would have stayed and did everything I could to help Mr. Rosenbaum. But the, the, the crowd just started to chase me and scream at me. Let's play, uh, can we have exhibit 14, please? Not on my stream. <clears throat> At the three hour, 58 minute, and 45 second mark. Why was it okay for him to shoot after the guy was down? The guy was falling. If I had to guess, my guess is it's probably like the total time from first shot to last shot. I don't know if anybody measured it. My guess is probably like one to two seconds, maybe less. That'd be my guess. The shot, okay, people are saying it was 0.76 seconds. Point, yeah, so like, I'm sorry, but when you shoot, when you're shooting somebody who's a threat to you, you don't have time to like shoot. Is he lunging at me? Is he falling for you? Right? You just you you, you shoot shoot shoot. Like cause when, by the time you've brandished a weapon, by brandish I mean you're aiming at a threatening manner. You're wielding in a threatening manner. You're already displaying lethal intent. If you're shooting at somebody, you're shooting to bring them down every time. Like that's just how it goes. Um, yeah. You, you, you don't have time to check after one shot. Like oh, is he falling over? Is he stumbling? Is he reaching? Right. It could also be that. Um, Oh, especially if Rosenbaum actually had his hand on the barrel of the gun. Jesus. <laughs> Plus, after you fired your four shots at Mr. Rosenbaum, there were three more gunshots right after that, right? Yes. And those were coming from 
very close to where you were, weren't they? Yes. They were coming from right here on the south side of the 63rd Street car source, right alongside 63rd Street on the north side of 63rd, right? Yes. Um, did you see Hassan's reaction to Rittenhouse crying? I haven't yet. We'll go over that later. Um, I have to be really careful because there's a lot of shit I want to say relating to this. Um, I will say keep track of who's like making fun of him for crying or anything like that. Anybody that's doing that, that has like depression, PTSD, triggers, whatever written in their bio, they're all lying. They're all 100% faking it. They're all faking it. They don't have any idea what a trauma response looks like. They don't know what a panic attack is. They probably never had one before. They have no idea about any of that. Um, the idea that like a 17 year old kid could shoot three people and kill two and not have some sort of residual trauma from that. I'm sorry, but if you're going to be traumatized by people calling you mean names on Twitter uh, and you can't fathom somebody else having a trauma from something like this, you're, you're faking everything. Like, and you deserve to be treated as such. Like, nobody should take you seriously. You should, you, you're, you're faking it all and fuck off, okay? Um, like, it's actually so unbelievable that there are people, like, especially losers sitting home at their computer, right? Like me talking all day about this shit. They're going to pretend like, bro, I could fucking blow two motherfuckers away, blast another dude's arm up. I wouldn't give a fuck. Like, Fuck you, motherfucker. Like, it takes a whole community's worth of people who are asking to even donate a little bit of your fucking merch shit to a cause. Like, get the fuck out of here with that big boy shit, okay? It's absolutely ridiculous. Sorry. Okay. Hold on. I gotta tone it way down. I've seen so much dumb shit about... I've seen so much stupid fucking shit about people talking about, like, these reactions. So fucking dumb. Um, <clears throat> Jesus. Okay, sorry. Uh, catch up. You didn't react at all to those gunshots, did you? That time my audio was still going in and out partially. But again, my question is, you didn't react at all to those, did you? Not that I could see. Let's continue, please. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hold on. Shot him, man. Shot him. Shot him, man. He laid him off. He laid him off. He laid him off. No one in that crowd yells get him or anything threatening towards you until after you start running away right no you had time in that moment to make a phone call didn't you i called dominic black yes you could have called 911 right yes but you chose to call your best friend right i called the first number on my phone is that quicker than three digits 911 <laughs> i just oh. i don't know and then you started running yes and the first person you encounter as you're running is jason lakowski correct yes this is a person that you had barely known for 15 minutes that night right Yes. And you told him you didn't shoot anyone, correct? No. You heard his testimony about that, right? Yes. Can we please play exhibit number 12? While we're getting that ready, you talked earlier about this crowd and what they were saying and, and you felt like- Hey, this is another thing we're gonna talk about a lot too. Destiny, Jesus, dude, take the cape off. You're going to start for this kid who inserted himself in a situation he wasn't ready for, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. He was old enough to walk through an AR-15 like a big, big soldier. I'm sorry, but like, None of you guys can use the he shouldn't have been there argument because the reality is, is that nobody should be protesting past curfew. There is no reason to do it. You don't need to be protesting at night when nobody can see you. That literally the only thing that happens protesting when the sun's going down is bad shit. You're like, people are there to break shit, to start shit, to do fucking crimes, to do shit. There's literally no fucking reason to do it. So if you want to do this, like, oh, he shouldn't have been there. Okay, cool. Neither should any other of the people out there outside that were breaking curfew. If you really want to, you really want to go down that route. But the problem is none of you motherfuckers seem to give a fuck about curfew, about state lines, about any of that shit when it applies to protesters and rioters. But when it applies to somebody else, now all of a sudden it's like, well, hold on. What time was the fucking curfew? Like, didn't the text go out? I don't know. I bet every motherfucker Fucker there got the same text that he did, but they were still out there. Right? I'm sorry. So I mean, like that that argument doesn't fly anymore. Sorry. Coming after you, you had time to stop and have a brief little talk with Jason Lakowski, didn't you? I stopped for a second and asked him to help me get to the police. Even with this crowd on top of you, as you describe it, you still had time for that, didn't you? For a second, I stopped for a second. Let's play exhibit number twelve, please. <laughs> There's, they're not showing the video on screen. I don't know. Go ahead. Pause. There are people in the crowd that are asking you why you just shot someone, right? Yes. And you told him he had a gun. I the time I was a little dazed and I was thinking of Mr. Zeminski with the pistol he had at the Duramax. 
So you shot Mr. Rosenbaum because Josh Rosaminski had a pistol? No. <laughs> you don't get to shoot someone else. You don't get to shoot someone else because someone else no. has a gun, right? No. But you told the crowd he had a gun, didn't you? That's what I said. And that wasn't true. Mr. Rosenbaum never had a gun, right? He, he didn't have a gun. Now can we please play exhibit number three at the one hour, 17 minute and 10 second mark? Yeah, sorry. So again, so people in chat saying, sorry, dude, it was clearly his intent was to play badass and just start some shit. Uh, and a rioter slash protest is arguably more moral right to be there than past curfew. Absolutely not. Bullshit. A rioter has more right to be there than some, like everybody, I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, all you motherfuckers are LARPing. Everybody is there to LARP. Okay. If you're protesting past curfew, you're there LARPing. If you're there with your little gun and your little crew, whatever, you're there LARPing. They're all LARPing. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, you, you just that you need other arguments than to say that he shouldn't have been there, okay? And also, every time you say that he crossed state lines, it's not fair. You give yourself away as being a loser suburbanite dipshit that just lives in a big city that doesn't have to. Like Jesus Christ, I worked in another state when I worked at the casino. I lived in Nebraska and I worked in Iowa. I, I traveled to that state literally every single fucking day of my life to work. So the idea of like crossing state lines, like okay, I get it. You live in a big city, you don't have to leave your state. It takes you two hours to get across like your city to get somewhere, that's fine. It's not like that in the rest of the US, okay? Especially in, in some rural areas. You might drive across fucking state lines every single day for work maybe, right? Jesus, like this kid's town where he lives in is literally on the fucking border. You told Mr. Grosskreutz you were going to the police, right? Yes. And then you said, I didn't shoot anyone, right? I don't, I can't really make out what the last part of the words were saying. Do you remember what you said? I remember saying, I think I said I had to. Let's play that back 10 seconds and play it again, please. Pause, pause. Aren't your exact words, I'm going to the police, I did not shoot anyone? That's what I remember from that night, but watching that, it sounds like I said I didn't. That, again, was not true. You just had shot someone, correct? I did. Why didn't you tell the truth? I was being chased by a mob, and I don't really remember that interaction very well. Let's play Exhibit 5, please. I feel like Destiny isn't acknowledging how they're both wrong, unless he already did and I missed it. I, judging, like, wrongness here is difficult. Personally, I think it's dumb to go and defend anything with your life when it's like a business, unless it's literally like a family-owned business or some shit. I wouldn't fucking do it. I think it's stupid to do it, especially when you're this young. Why would you? Why would you ever risk your life and the rest of your shit for doing it? But like, does he have as much right to be there as like any protester or rioter? Probably. I would say probably. If it's a community that he's like in or whatever, and he wants to be there, yeah, I think he's just as much a right to be there as um, um, as as any protester or rioter. Sure. Go ahead. He was there to intimidate people with his gun, and the protesters were there because they thought they were protesting a police state. Rittenhouse was an extension of that state, and the guy that was chasing him thought he was going to be a hero. Uh, I, this is like just literally the most biased telling of anything ever. I can say Rittenhouse was there to help people and keep the peace, and the protesters were there just to stir shit up and start trouble, right? We can frame that any way you want. The reality is, is that nothing good happens at night um, when it comes to protests. Like, they're just... Nothing good happens at night. There's no reason for it, right? It's harder to see for like news coverage and shit. Like it's not like you're blocking anybody from going to work. Like the only people seeing your shit are gonna be like by the by the light of the fires you start, right? Like why? Like there's just there's no good reason to be protesting at night. Like there's, there's I think that curfews and everything are fine when it comes to this stuff. Like now we've heard a lot of testimony about this person who comes up behind you with something and hits you in the head. We've heard about Anthony Huber's first. What situation can you put yourself in where you should not be allowed self-defense by the law? You will always put yourself, but it can't always be just. Well, you shouldn't be, if you're in the commission of an aggression on somebody else, then I think you lose the right to self-defense. So if I go to assault somebody or rape somebody or kill somebody and then they like fight back and then I kill them in self-defense, I, I, don't, I don't have the right to self-defense. I'm already committing something aggressive, right? Um, I think that if you're aggressing on people in certain ways, you, lose, you basically lose the right to self-defense. I think that's fair. Approached to you with a skateboard, correct? Yes. You testified that after a few more feet, you felt lightheaded and you stumbled. That's what you told when your attorney was asking you questions, correct? Yes. No one knocked you to the ground. You lost your own balance, correct? I was hit to the point where I stumbled. You said in response to your attorney's questions that you stumbled because you were lightheaded. Do you remember telling us that? From getting hit, yes. You were lightheaded because you had been running and you were being chased. That was why you were lightheaded, right? That and being hit, yes. Let's continue. Pause. There is an individual who comes at you and Pausing jumps Andy. towards you and attempts to kick you, correct? He does kick me, yes. And you fire two shots directly at him. 
with your AR-15, correct? Yes. You intended to hit him with those bullets, correct? I intended for him. Yes. At that close range. And brandishing terrible. isn't an aggressive action? When you brandish a firearm, let me be clear on this. A lot of people don't understand what this means, okay? Having a firearm is not brandishing a firearm. Brandishing a firearm is having a firearm in a threatening manner, okay? If I have an AR-15 strapped to my chest, I'm not brandishing the firearm. If I have the gun out and I'm aiming it or I'm like holding it and I'm acting aggressive, you can argue that's brandishing a firearm. But doing an open carry, that's not brandishing a firearm. That's not what brandishing means. Um, if you're threatened by that, personally, I think open carry is stupid because a lot of people can feel threatened by weapons, but just having an open carry does not count as brandishing. Right? <clears throat> is the aggressor the main factor in cases like this? Yeah, of course the aggressor is probably gonna be the most important part when it comes to self-defense, absolutely. That's what they're both going back and forth here trying to establish, right? That's why the prosecution is bullying him so much. It's like, you shot him, you didn't need to, you pointed your gun at him, right? Because he's trying to establish that Rittenhouse is the aggressor. When Rittenhouse is saying, well, I feared for my life, he was coming at me, right? He's trying to establish himself as the, as the defender, right? To, to have the self-defense. Because if you're aggressing on somebody first, it, the self-defense kind of falls apart, right? <clears throat> You missed, right? I don't know. You intended to kill him with those shots, didn't you? No. Did you even care? Do you really need to say nothing good happens at night to make your argument? I think I agree, but is it an... I'm just saying, like, the idea of, like, protesting past curfew and at night just sets you up for so many horrible fucking things. I don't know why anybody would do it. It's just such a horrible idea. It's such a bad idea. Like, protest during the day or the evening or whatever is fine, but, like, at night, like, past, like, 8, 9, 10 o'clock, depending on how dark it is, why would you do this? It's... All, you're only looking for... It's, like, so much trouble. Like, why? whether or not those two rounds were going to kill him? I didn't want to have to kill anybody that night. In this moment, you're making a deliberate decision to pull the trigger twice, correct? Yes. That wasn't an accident, that was your conscious decision, wasn't it? Yes. And you're firing an AR-15 at close range to this individual, correct? Yes. And you knew full well that if you hit him with one or both of those bullets, it could kill him, right? There's that possibility. If you hit him with one of those, wouldn't you agree it's a pretty strong likelihood you're gonna kill him? I don't know. If... Did that even factor into your mind at that point? Did you even care whether you were gonna kill him or not? I, I didn't want to have to kill anybody. I was being attacked. That's why I shot him. What shot at him? You shot at him with the intent of hitting him and killing him, correct? I didn't want to kill anybody. Then why are you shooting at someone with an AR-15 at close range if you don't want to kill him? Because he's attacking me and he's stomping my face in. <laughs> Jumping that, and kicking my face in. That, you didn't see any weapons on that person, did you? No. You didn't see a gun? No. You didn't see a knife? No. You didn't see a bat or a club? No. You didn't see a chain? No. All he uses is one foot, correct? Yes. <laughs> Let's continue the video. <laughs> Pause. You've just shot around into Anthony Huber's chest, right? Yes. Now, up until this moment, and probably for the rest of that evening, you didn't know the name Anthony Huber, did you? I did not. Up until this moment in this evening, you had never had any interaction with him, took any notice of him, fair to say? Yes. Okay. And when you shoot him, he's got his skateboard in his hand? Yes. You didn't see any gun in his hand, correct? No. You didn't see a knife? No. You didn't see a bat? No. You didn't see a club? No. All he's got is the skateboard, right? That he's hit me in the head with twice, yes. Okay. And you intended to pull the trigger at that moment with your AR-15, correct? Yes. That wasn't an accident. No. That was your deliberate decision, correct? Yes. And you knew that the way that gun was positioned, you were gonna fire that bullet right into his chest, right? He was attacking me, so I pulled the trigger. And you knew that when you pulled that trigger, that bullet was gonna go right into his chest, didn't you? I can't say, I don't know where the bullet would've went exactly. The end of that gun was pointed directly at his chest when you pulled the trigger, correct? Yes. And you knew that, correct? Yes. And you still pulled the trigger, didn't you? Yes. Because you intended to kill Anthony Huber at that moment, didn't you? Jesus. No. What did you think was gonna happen then? You got a gun that's aimed directly at his chest, you pull the trigger. What did you think was gonna happen? If I didn't pull the trigger, I thought Mr. Huber was gonna kill me. I agree that you ask for trouble after curfew, but could you say bringing a gun to a known turbulent location makes for some sort of aggression? On its own, no. It might be upping the stakes a little bit, but I wouldn't say that by default makes you an aggressor. Absolutely not. Maybe I misphrased my question. Let me try again. When you pull the trigger of the AR-15 and it is directly against Anthony Huber's chest, what did you think was going to happen to Anthony Huber? That he would no longer be a threat to my safety. Because he'd be dead, right? Because he wouldn't be a threat to me. I don't know if he'd be dead or not. Did you even care at that moment whether or not Anthony- At what point will people carrying military weapons be held responsible? First of all, an AR-15 is not a military weapon. The military weapon is the M4. The AR-15 is a civilian version of it, okay? So one, AR-15s are not a military weapon. The whole term military weapon is stupid anyway, okay? Doesn't Kyle, because military weapons suck sometimes anyway, okay? Doesn't Kyle bear um, some responsibility for carrying such a deadly weapon? I bet other weapons wouldn't have yielded such a result. Bro, how are you gonna say that like if this guy is carrying a, 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 an AR-15, if other people are attacking him, how, like, how why am I blaming the guy carrying the weapon? No, sorry, it doesn't work that way. You got you have to do better. You need a better argument than that. Okay. <clears throat> Huber lived and died. Yes. Your only concern in that moment was your own safety, correct? Yes. The next shooting is of Gage Grosskreutz. We have stopped the video at a moment here when he is crushed in front of you with his hands in the air, correct? Yes. Your gun is pointed at him, isn't it? 
It's pointed downward towards his feet. It's pointed at his body, some part of his body, correct? Yes. And he's no threat to you at this moment, is he? Your Honor, he's standing in front of a gun. That's an argument you can make. I'm asking a question of the witness. Yes. He's no threat to you at this moment, is he? He is a threat. He has a gun in his hand. You saw that gun? Yes. So at the moment, throughout all of these moments of your interaction with Mr. Grosskreutz, you were aware of the fact that he had that gun in his hand, correct? Not until that moment. I'm talking about from this moment on, correct? Yes. And of course, that's a handgun, right? Yes. And you have an AR-15, correct? Yes. And at this particular moment, he's not pointing his gun at you, is he? Not at that moment. But you've got your gun pointed at him, correct? Looking at the video, I think I'm lowering my weapon. I think it's just a still shot of where you have it to where that, but I believe in the whole video I'm lowering it, and then he points his gun at me. Can you help me understand, Mr. Rittenhouse, why Gage Grosskreutz, with a pistol in his hand, is a threat to kill you, but you, with an AR-15 pointed at him, is not a threat to kill him at this moment? Can you help me understand that? I've been attacked by several people, and he decided to come and point a gun at my head. Well, first, like, He hasn't done that yet, has he? No. So again, I ask you, in this moment, you told us, Gage Grosskreutz is a threat to you right now. Yes. He's got a pistol, not aimed at you. You've got an AR-15 aimed at him. Why is he more of a threat to you than you are to him? Because he was, he was moving at me with a gun in his hand. This is right after you've killed Anthony Huber, correct? Yes. Right after you fired two shots at almost point-blank range at the man running towards the camera right now and missing him, correct? Yes. And you're telling us Gage Grosskreutz is the real threat at this moment? Yes. Can we please pull up exhibit number 80? beginning at frame 468. This is an exhibit which consists of 729 frames from the BG On The Go video that we just watched. This was prepared by James Armstrong of the State Crime Lab. I'm not gonna show all 729, but I'd like to start at frame 468 and we're going to go frame by frame from there until frame 500. Is that the prosecutor doing useful? Do they take into account the fact that 99% of people, Mr. Stoop, could especially you civilians, slowly... will not be thinking clearly when being attacked? Um, I mean, the prosecution is doing what the prosecution should do. It's not The prosecution's job is not to worry about the defense. That's the defense's job. Prosecution is trying to prove their case that Rittenhouse is either acting maliciously or was trying to kill people that he didn't need to or wasn't acting in self-defense. Uh, that's the prosecution's job. They're, they're, he's doing what he needs to do. That's that's how it works. The prosecution's job is not to be concerned with like how reasonable is the defendant or whatever, right? Of course. Advance frame by frame until I tell you to stop. Mr. Rittenhouse, this is immediately after Gage Grosskreutz has stopped in front of you and you are doing something with your firearm at that moment. Do you recall that? Yes. You were asked some questions about what you were doing at that moment. Is it fair to say that you turn your firearm over and you're looking at it, you're examining it? Yes. But your testimony is you didn't do anything to actually manipulate it at that moment. Correct. Is that fair to say? Correct. Okay. Please continue. Hold on. Do you need to be fearful for your life to argue self-defense when you kill someone? Can you not argue it in any other case and you kill? No, for self-defense, there has to be like a clear threat that can actually hurt and like cause serious bodily harm or kill you. That it can't just be somebody's gonna hurt you, right? If I see some guy walking up to me and he's like, I'm gonna punch your lights out, and he, and he, or not, I may, shouldn't say that, but he's like, I'm gonna punch you and he like punches me in the shoulder a few times or whatever, I can't take out a gun and blow him away. It's like, oh shit, I thought he was gonna kill me, right? There has to be like, now if somebody comes up to me with like a fucking PVC pipe or some shit, um, or, or like some, I don't know, like a knife or like some, like a baseball bat, maybe something, right? Then, then yeah, okay. Well, now, um, now, now it's different, right? You can make the argument that I thought you, you were reasonable. You had a reasonable uh, thought that you were going to suffer like severe bodily harm or something. Yeah. Um, so this guy in chat is saying, what is more deadly, a skateboard or a gun? Can't the skateboard dude say he was acting in self-defense? Oh, wait, he's dead, Kyle's not. The skateboard dude was chasing and running after Rittenhouse. When you're chasing somebody and running them down, it's really hard to argue self-defense. You probably will never be able to do that. When you're chasing somebody, it's really hard to argue that you're acting in self-defense. Game 500 shows you firing your AR-15 towards Gage Girl Squirts. At this particular moment, he does not have that pistol pointed towards you, does he? He does. His left leg has stepped across, in an, not directly towards you, but to the side of you, correct? Yes. He's reaching in with his left arm towards you, correct? Yes. 
he never steps back and puts the gun in both hands in a ready aim position towards you, does he? He doesn't do that. He never takes that gun with his right hand and stands there and holds it out with his right hand in front of him and aims it directly at you, does he? No, he does this pointing it directly at my head. And you thought that's the way he was going to shoot you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you thought he ran up close to you to, to shoot you? Yes. You understand that he could have taken that gun if he wanted to and shot you from 10, 15, 20 feet away, right? Can you rephrase? Sorry, I'm have, trying to understand the question. You're, you understand. Just to be clear, real quick also, okay? Shooting people at range with rifles is very easy. Shooting people at range with handguns is very hard. You'd be surprised how hard it is to, to bullseye a target 10 yards away, okay? Handguns, sh firing a handgun requires so much more skill than firing a rifle. It is an incredibly difficult thing to do, just as a point of reference, sorry. Uh, like rifles, especially if you have a good sight on a rifle, you can hand an AR-15, any 5.56, whatever rifle to, uh, to like Lily peach you and be like, Lily, good luck. And at like fucking 20, 30 yards, like ding, 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 like easiest thing in the world where, and you can like, whereas like with a firearm, uh, with a pistol, way, 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 way harder to, to actually hit somebody, um, center mass with, um, uh, AR-15 is, uh, two, two, three, sorry, not five, six. can, I think something chambered at two, three, can fire five, five, six, right? Can it? It might, maybe it might not be able to, but, um, yeah, sorry. Um, when I say yard, just hear meter. Okay. Sorry. And that a pistol like that doesn't need to be right up close to someone to shoot, right? Yes. It can shoot from 10. 15. Someone said no. And someone said five, five, six is two, two, three. I thought if something was chambered in either, or you could, you could fire either cartridge. If something's chambered in, in two, two, three or five, five, six, you could fire either, but I might not be right on that. I'm not sure. 20 feet away, right? Yes. Mr. Grosskreutz could have stopped 10, 15, 20 feet away if he wanted to shoot you and fired his pistol at you, couldn't you? He could have, but he didn't. And your testimony is that you believe he ran up close to you and reached in with his left hand with his gun in his right hand because that was his way of using this gun to shoot you? Yes. Did you think he was reaching in to grab your gun? No. You didn't think he was going to take your gun away, did you? I thought he was going to shoot me. With his pistol? Yes. Which he never actually does. <laughs> Correct? Correct. Oh, he never wow. fires that gun at you at all. No. In fact, in this entire sequence of events, no one ever fired a gun at you, did they? Mr. Zeminski fired a gun from behind me. Did Mr. Zeminski fire that gun at you? I believe so. What do you base that on? Did you see it? The video. Did you see it? No. That's, you're talking about back when the incident with Mr. Rosenbaum happens, correct? Yes. That happened while you and Mr. Rosenbaum are running across the car source lot, correct? Yes. At that moment in time, you didn't see Joshua Zeminski fire a shot, did you? No. You, you also don't shot. have to hold a pistol with two hands. You don't have to, but it's very, very, very hard to shoot somebody with a pistol. Um, with just one hand. Pistols are really hard to fire, guys. There's A pistol is so much harder to shoot. That, like, you can have a pistol right in front of you, and you pull the trigger, and the shot is good. It's so much harder to fire a pistol than a rifle, okay? Shot, right? Yes. But you had no idea who fired it. I believed it was Mr. Zeminski. So that gunshot did not at all factor into your decision to kill Joseph Rosenbaum, did it? No, Mr. Rosenbaum trying to steal my gun dead. So you didn't think that was a gunshot from Joseph Rosenbaum? No. You knew he didn't have a gun? Oh, I see what your question is now. You, th you didn't think that the shot which had been fired supposedly by Mr. Zeminski had been fired by Mr. Rosenbaum? Exactly. Okay, okay. So you heard a gunshot. You now know that was Joshua Zeminski based on watching the videos, right? Yes. But at the time... Isn't the job of the prosecutor to grasp at every straw might be good to mention? Didn't I literally just say this? Didn't I pause this and say and go on like a whole like two minute thing earlier where I said, yes, of course, the whole job of the prosecution is to prove their case through any means necessary. It's not their job to be concerned with the realistic or possibility or whatever that the defendant, you know, could have been. Not, yeah, th that's the job of the jury at the end of the day. How possible is it that the uh, defense, you know, wasn't thinking or wasn't of sound mind or whatever, right? That's the, the jury is supposed to figure this out, right? I think that was Joseph Rosenbaum firing that shot, did you? No. You knew Joseph Rosenbaum didn't have a gun, right? Yes. And you certainly would agree with me that you don't have the right to kill Joseph Rosenbaum for something Joshua Zeminski does, correct? Yes. When you heard that gunshot, you didn't know whether it was fired at you or up in the air or at Rosenbaum or anyone else, did you? I heard it from behind me, but I didn't. You didn't know where it was aimed? Correct. Correct? You didn't feel it hit you? Correct? Correct. You didn't hear it ricochet anywhere near you? Correct? Correct. You received no indication that that gunshot was going to put your life in danger, correct? I don't know. There were gunshots going off all night long, weren't there? Sort of. Firecrackers, Fireworks, gunshots? Yeah. Hard to tell the difference? Yeah. Right after you kill Rosenbaum, there's three shots right after that, aren't there? Yes. From very close to where you were? Yes. Yet you don't turn and shoot anybody there after you hear those, did you? No. So, getting back to my original question. In this entire sequence of events, no one ever fired a shot at you, did they? No. After you kill Anthony Huber, shoot Gage Grosskreutz, and attempt to 
fire those two shots at the person who, who jumped at you. You got up and you walked away, didn't you? Yes. And you're about, what, a block away from the police line? Yes. And you know that police line's there because you're running towards it. Yes. And there's really nothing in the road between you and that police line, is there? At, after the shooting? Everybody no. scatters? No, nothing in the road. So you have a clear line of sight from where you did those shootings to those law enforcement vehicles, correct? Yes. And you still have your AR-15? Yes. And the crowd is pretty much run after they hear the sh sh shots, right? Yes. You still have your medic bag, yes. correct? Yes. You never once offer to help anybody that you just shot. <laughs> Jesus. Don't. Correct, you don't? Correct. Anthony Huber is lying there over on the ground after you shot him once in the chest, correct? Yes. You didn't know at that point whether he was alive or dead, did you? I didn't. You never went over to check, did you? No. You didn't know whether it was possible to save his life at that moment or not, did you? I didn't. And you didn't even care. You just kept on walking, correct? I kept walking to get to the police line. Gage Grosskreutz, right after you shoot him in the arm, is yelling, I need a medic. Did you hear that? Yes. That's in the videos, isn't it? Yes. You don't do anything to help him, do you? No. You just decide to get out of there as fast as you can, correct? Yes. If you had seen someone running up the street with a gun and the crowd was saying that that person just shot someone, like they were saying about you, you would have taken action to stop him yourself, wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't have. You're running around putting out fires, aren't you? Yes. A shooting's far more serious than a fire, isn't it? Yes. You took it upon yourself to do the things that the police and the fire weren't doing that, fire departments weren't doing that night, correct? I helped put out fires, but I wouldn't say that. One second. You went around offering medical service because you didn't think there were EMTs or EMS that would be able to come in there, correct? Yes. So you took it upon yourself to do the things that you didn't think the police or fire could do, correct? I wouldn't say I took it upon myself, but I was, I was helping people with first aid and putting out fires at businesses. So if you saw someone running with a gun and everybody said, that guy just shot someone, you would have taken your AR-15 and tried to stop him, wouldn't you? It goes to the crowd's reaction to him, Your Honor. I think he would have reacted the same way. The, the crowd is important in terms of it's a factor that bears on the some of the counts as to what the surroundings were. Uh, the, otherwise, the crowd is unimportant, and what the crowd, what he might have done vis-a-vis -vis the crowd is, uh, I, I don't see where we're going. Understood. When you got back to that police line, and they, what'd you say, they, they pepper sprayed you? I believe so, but I don't remember it. They told you to get out of the road. Yes. Because they were going in there yes. to do what you hadn't done, which is to try. Do you think he will walk? So assuming the judge doesn't do anything crazy, the important thing to remember is that this is a trial by jury. Anything could happen. Okay. Anything could happen. <laughs> I am help the people that you just shot, right? Yes. And then you went after, back after that to the 59th Street car source, didn't you? Yes. And you told them that you just shot someone. Yes. Someone, meaning an individual person, correct? I wasn't meaning individual. I was saying I just shot someone. I just shot someone. You were told by Nick Smith that the police were coming to your location, to the 59th Street car source, right? I don't recall that. And yet, you decided to flee, didn't you? No. You didn't stick around for the police, did you? I, I went to go turn myself into the Antioch Police Department. A couple of hours later. An hour later. What a couple hours later. I'm asking the witness if the witness can answer. Uh, go ahead, you can answer, sir. It was a couple of hours later, wasn't it? No. And in between leaving that location in downtown Kenosha and getting to Antioch, you were looking at social media, weren't you? No, I wasn't. My phone was dead. You had heard from other people that your name was out there, right? Later on in the evening, I believe I heard something, but no. You knew that your picture was out there, right? No. You're telling me? I don't want to get into this too much because it's a little bit cringe, but <clears throat> honest question, you called this guy operator with a gun. Wouldn't that technically mean he subdued all the aggressors and not have killed someone? I think it's fair to say the situation could have been handled way better by Rittenhouse. I, like, it gets weird because people are doing some cringe hero worship, but honestly, he probably conducted himself in a level that would be like movie or video game tier. Um, the idea that in the middle of everything that was happening, he had a guy come up to him, put his hands up, and he didn't just fucking spray like crazy and kill every single person in front of him, honestly blows my fucking mind. Um, and he's only 17. Uh, that, th like, there was an unbelievable level of restraint given what he had on him, right? Because he has a murder weapon, okay? AR-15, you can do a lot of damage in a crowd of people. Um, I, I, in terms of like, could he have done better? No, I, I think he did like about, um, <clears throat> are you serious? What is this framing?
And so the frame is absolutely true. I'll fight this to the death. It's like so obvious. Like he could have been blasting away like fucking 20,000 people chasing or whatever. I think he showed a lot of restraint, but I mean like that's uh, I mean, it's, I don't think that's that relevant to this. Sit here under oath that after- Ultimately, how many shots did he fire that night? Was it less than 10 shots? They got out of a 30 round magazine, like, I don't know. <clears throat> Those shootings, between then and the time you turned yourself into the Antioch Police Department, you had no idea that there was social media out there with your picture and your name as the shooter. I'm trying to recall, but I, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Oh, you may step down, sir. Before they call that witness, I need to use the men's room. How about a, about a five to ten minute break? Please don't talk about the case during the break. You may either use the jury room or you may remain down here uh, in the library. Don't you think it'd be better to just wait for the judge jury to evaluate where Hustad was good or bad? This feels like covering breaking news. I mean, it's not breaking. This is not breaking news. This is a trial. Like <laughs> We're seeing everything that's being presented. Um, I, I, I don't think that watching a trial is breaking news. <clears throat> uh, in the same way, like, the reason why breaking news is usually so bad to cover is because you, um, right, it's because all the facts and everything aren't out. You don't know what's happening, something, but, like, by the time, by the, tri by the time people are in trial, all the facts should be there. That's the whole point of the discovery process.